In this video, we are going to have a look at the topic of bivariate statistics. Now, this is a very important concept in IB Maths, as it appears in pretty much every single uh, IB Maths exam. So, bivariate statistics looks at the relationship of two different variables. And in the example here, we have some business selling ice creams, and we want to see if there's a relationship here or some trend that's happening where the number of ice creams they sell depends on the temperature. And this is, this is a classic example of two variables which do typically depend on each other because when it's cold, ice creams aren't very popular. People might opt for a hot chocolate or a coffee, but when the temperature increases and it gets quite hot, ice creams are definitely more popular. So I have our data here and our temperature is in degrees Celsius on our uh, horizontal axes and the number of ice creams is on the vertical axes. And I've plotted my points here. And what this topic wants to look at uh, is we want to see if we can fit a line of a line of best fit or a linear regression. And that's a word that you might see, a linear regression, which just means a straight line which best fits our data. So if I were to just, just approximate a best line, I'll draw this in here. It would look something probably like this here. It won't be perfect, but this would be our, our line of best fit. And the reason why we like to do this is because if we do have a line of best fit, we can then predict predict values uh, from data that we don't actually have in our original data set. So if we have this line of best fit and we know that tomorrow's forecast temperature is, is 17 degrees, well, in this data, there hasn't been a day that was 17 degrees before. But what we can do is we can, we can get an idea of how many ice creams we may sell if it was 17 degrees from the data that we've already had. And the closer these dots are, our data points to our line of best fit, the stronger and, and, the, and the more confident we are with this approximation. So that's what we want to do. And we want to try and fit a line of best fit. And we want to come up with the equation of this straight line such that we can then predict our values. So let's get our calculator out. This is how we do it. We want to I have our variables in here. So I have T for my temperature with all of my temperatures here and N for my number of ice creams. And then if you have this calculator, the T I inspire, you can go to menu, statistics, stat calculations, and we're looking for linear regression. So we can choose either MX plus B or A plus BX. I like to use this one here, MX plus B, because this is this is the equation of a straight line that we're used to seeing, mx plus c, y equals mx plus c. So if we click on this, our x list stands for our, our x variable, which in this case is t. So you might need to scroll down to find t. And our y list will be the n, the number of ice creams. Okay. And what then comes out is all of our information. We have a regression equation, mx plus b, where m is 1.57 and B is 17.14. So I'll put I'll put all of this in. Let's, uh, M is 1.57. So M equals 1.57. Our B our B value was 17.1. Our R squared, and I'll explain what that means, is 0.9. 909 so 0 0.909 our r our r we can find 0 0.95 i'll just use 0 0.95 for now okay so these are the key bits of information that we need for this topic so m stands for the gradient of our line uh, so we know that we have a gradient here, a slope of 1.57, and that will have a meaning in a lot of these questions. And our B value is our y-intercept, which our original drawing was pretty good, 17.1. This looks to be about 17.1. So our, our linear regression line here will be, it will be N equals, so Y equals, but in this case it's N, our gradient, so 1.57 times x, which will be our, actually our t variable, and then plus 17.1. So this will be our linear regression, 
uh, equation and this is this is very important because then if I say well what well, how many ice creams will we sell n uh, if the temperature was 17 degrees like I said earlier well even though we've had no day before where the average temperature was 17 we can just sub 17 into this value for t and what that is doing is it will, it will find the corresponding n value the number of ice creams which is which is really nice which it gives us an approximation now a few key words is if we want to do that sub in a t value which is within our known boundary so our known boundary will be temperatures from 10 to our max 35 that is called interpolation interpolation so if you see if you see or hear the word interpolation it means you're going to be uh, predicting the uh, the n number of ice creams when I give you a temperature which was in within our known data and that's that's completely fine to do but if we if I say how many ice creams do we sell if the temperature was 50 degrees so over here at 50 degrees that's called extrapolation so interpolation is within the known data extrapolation is outside the known data and extrapolations uh, it's a little bit frowned upon because it's it's in unknown territory it's not as simple as just extending this line on because if it was 50 degrees uh, then something might happen it might be too hot that nobody goes outside and therefore the number of ice creams didn't continue this trend it was so hot that the ice cream store had to actually close down for the day because no one no one came so extrapolation is a bit of a dangerous dangerous thing and if you if you see an economist that likes to ex extrapolate data out of a, of a share price or or something that's a bit unknown it's a little bit of a, a guess I, I, I guess okay now what I've, the diagram over here it just shows uh, some different types of data and the words that are associated with them so if we have our dots which all seem to be following a line like here and it's going up so when one variable goes up the other variable goes up it'll be strong and positive the strong means it's close to the line and the positive means that both variables follow each other this would be a strong negative because it, it is strong uh, it's all close to the line uh, but it's going down a weak positive is spread out data but it does seem to be trending upwards a little bit so it'll be weak and positive uh, weak and negative would be this one here where it is trending down but pretty weak and the moderate one the negative here is eh, there's a bit of a trend there it's not a not a clear trend so you don't want to predict too many things off this type of trend and no correlation is actually very very common if I were to say to you uh, the number of sandwiches sold with temperature uh, there, there wouldn't be much correlation there because sandwiches don't really depend on the on the temperature now each of these will have an r value r value is the correlation coefficient so this is this value here r the r value is very very uh, popular and it's commonly asked in ib questions the r value ranges between negative one to one uh, if it's in the negative zone so if r is between 0 and negative 1 it means it has a negative correlation so it would be this one here uh, this one here and this one here and the closer it is to the extreme negative 1 the stronger it is so this might have an r value of negative 0 0.9 this might be r is negative 0 0.6 so it's getting a little bit weaker and this one would be negative 0 0.2 maybe and if it's in the positive zone if, if r is positive it's trending upwards and the stronger it is the closer it is to one which is why with our example we had a positive r value of 0 0.95 now r squared is is used often just to demonstrate how strong it is so they square the r value and what that pretty much is doing is it, it doesn't really care we don't care that it might be trending down or it's trending up we don't care if it's negative or positive if we square all of our r values it'll turn them all positive and then we can just compare the strength of our model irrespective if it's positive or negative so that's why uh, in often mathematics assignments you'll get asked to talk about the r squared value of your data uh, whether it's a, a strong correlation okay so these questions are typically pretty similar uh, so if you practice a few IB questions what you'll need to find is the equation of our 
line, which is our linear regression. We can do that always with our calculator. They may ask you an interpolation question. So find n when t is 17 or t is 32. If they say find n when t is 50 degrees, you need to be careful and say, well, this is extrapolation. Uh, it would just be a guess. Uh, and uh, we need to find R and maybe discuss what R is. Okay. Uh, I encourage you to try a few questions on this topic. Good luck.